Hello to all of you bold, beautiful, brilliant, and highly evolved souls. I'm Davina. And today uh, the topic is going to be, how do I phrase this? Um, holding on to the fantasy. And this is what has kept us in denial in our childhoods and then continuing on through our life. Um, I suppose depending how old you are, but for me, it's been like, five decades of, of being in denial. And I just had this sort of epiphany this morning and I wanted to share it with you. I'd been thinking about my, my counseling and um, I kept reflecting on what a strange kind of thing counseling is. Every counseling thing has always been like, it's a bit weird. Like, I don't even know really who they are or, um, and I was really thinking, like, I want more of a relational approach where, you know, like, what was when I, where I can I ask my uh, counselor and say, you know, what what was your healing process like? And did you go non contact with your family? Were your parents narcissists? Like, really, like, get to know them. Like, who are you? What do you what do you value? Do you believe in God? Like, are you spiritual? Like all these things I'm realizing I'm afraid to ask. And I was also afraid to ask in the beginning, all of my boundaries. I kind of like to shy it away. I kind of tiptoed around it. And I just sort of vaguely listed, like I want empathy, compassion, validation. And even after I did the video on tips um, for, you know, seeing a therapist, I I still shied away because there's so much fear of abandonment, so much fear that this person is going to reject me. They're not going to be a fit and I'm going to be alone. And for a child alone meant, you know, certain doom. So this is a deeply, deeply um, ingrained survival, you know, kind of tactic that we learned and so I realized like at the start of the relationship, I'm often, I have often done this. It's been in like in friendships, in my marriage, in jobs, in counseling situations where um, I meet the person and I think, oh, they seem nice. They seem caring. I think I like them. And, and that's kind of all I, and then the friendship just sort of starts and I'm kind of enjoying the conversations and but there's never sort of a meta conversation about our relationship. There's never um, more specific details, like how often do you want to meet? Do you want to talk on the phone in between? Do you like, what, what are your intentions with this relationship? Are you wanting, you know, are you really seeking like a deep friendship? Are you just wanting casual? Like there's, I've never gone into this depth of like asking these important questions and probably millions and millions of people go into a marriage like this, you know, like not really just like, oh, you seem really nice and I like you and you remind me of my mother. Um, and um, like, I'm just afraid to ask these questions because, you know, I don't want to find out. I don't want to find out that this person is maybe not on the same page as me because then I would be alone. I would have to leave the relationship. Um, so I want to believe that they are a fit, just like in my childhood. I needed to believe that my parents were a match for me. I needed to believe that they were competent, that they were capable, that they were healthy and loving people. And in order to do that, like that maintained my hope, right? My hope that, and that they were, you know, would be able to care for me. Um, and in order to do that, I needed to believe that I was the, I was the shameful one. I was the one who was defective. I was the one with the problem. I was being difficult. Um, whatever that um, shame, you know, was put on me and I needed to, believe in that so I could believe the fantasy that my parents were good enough, were the good enough parents. Um, so I want to stay in that fantasy, even if I don't, don't know these people. Like I know I went into my marriage like that, like such a fantasy image of who my 
husband was and I didn't want to know I didn't never I never asked him questions I never said what do you value or you know um you know what are your beliefs about this or what do you think about that or like and it wasn't until much later like 10 11 years on that I started to see who he was and I went whoa you know like maybe I was you know like just um so yeah I was able to pretend um, in my mind, um, that they were who I wanted them to be. So in this codependent relationship, my parents are also um, doing that to me, like they're shooting me, they're like, you should be like this, and you should be like that. And I also then have a fantasy image of who they are. And so there's no authenticity, authenticity in this connection at all. Um and we were forced, you know, we were forced into this fantasy. It was the only way to get through your childhood was to believe that it was, you know, that it was us, that we were the ones with with the, um, we were the ones that were the problem or the troublemaker or, you know, that we were weak or we were, you know, all that stuff, too sensitive. Um, that way we could keep the hope that our parents might change that if we just did the right thing they might change and you know and that we kept that belief that we can fix them we can change them we can heal them we can save them and um and this can this can carry out into our adult relationships so um yeah so it's it's keeping this fantasy image and then we take on the blame, we take on the shame. And this is how this just sort of perpetuates. And I realized like, wow, I just came out of this this morning. Um, I was feeling terrified of my counseling session today. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm done playing this pretend kind of like what this is not a grown up thing. Like you're, you're supposed to be the counselor, you're supposed to be the one like leading this stuff. Like, Oh, I'm just like, whoa, you know, um, so I'm going to like, I don't care about your feelings. This is the thing too, is like, well, we don't want to hurt their feelings. If I like, if I'm really full in myself and full in my power, they're going to feel shame. They're going to feel bad. They're going to feel uncomfortable. Well, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> right? Let them feel uncomfortable because otherwise it's me feeling uncomfortable, me feeling ashamed. So. Um, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong, anything wrong by showing up and shining and being all of me. And if that makes you feel bad, that's your problem because I'm not doing something wrong. That's the thing, right? Um, I think there's a quote by Miriam Williamson that really, you know, sums that up about um, about not playing small. And um, sorry, I can't recite it, but um, definitely. Um, recommend looking that up um, if you if you can today so you don't need to play small anymore it's okay to, to be in your full self and and have the courage to really find out like who who are you with who are these people in your life you know are they really on the same page as you are they really a fit and this takes tremendous amount of courage so um wherever you are on your journey, you're exactly where you need to be. And I'm realizing, wow, it's literally like whatever is in the way is the way. You can't get it wrong. So thank you for listening. And I am Davina wishing you many, many blessings on your journey of healing and awakening. Thanks for watching.